This is me, Undead Viking. I want to talk to you about this game. It is called Gondola. Now, when I was a wee lad, uh, about two and a half decades or so ago, uh, my jazz band for the high school I went to, Fargo South High, Go Bruins! Uh, we went on a trip to Europe, and one of the places we went uh, was Venice, which was pretty cool that I got to go and see all these cool things. Now, when I was in the city with the, uh, the, the cool water paths and what have you, the canals, if you will, uh, I saw gondolas. I did not, however, uh, ride on one. I was not, like, there with, like, a girl or something. I wanted to be all romantic or what have you. Um, I, I thought they looked cool, and I thought it was kind of neat that people could take these rides up and down these... Uh, canals which were really dirty now that I'm thinking about it but regardless it was kind of neat and gondola is a game uh, a tile lane game that is also a race game where each player will be piloting a gondola down these like twisty little turny canals and trying to be the first person to cross these uh, five checkpoints that the players themselves will be, play be placing uh, on the board as those tiles are drawn and it is a very very tricksy very very fun little game where you are always trying to make sure that you're moving at the best possible speed you can each and every turn, which is very variable, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But also, you're trying to place tiles uh, on the board that are going to kind of mess with the other pathing that other players are going to be taking. So, I uh, want to show you how uh, Gondola looks and how it plays, and we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, cool. I have set up a four-player game of Gondola, and this is a prototype I was sent, so this is not going to be exactly what the game is going to look like once it is published. Uh, most notably is these giant cubes here that are representing the player's gondolas uh, will actually be ships uh, in the, uh, the completed uh, published version of the game. Also, these little cubes here that are used to mark checkpoints as you go through them. I'll explain that in just a little bit. Uh, will also be like little flags as well, so... Just keep that in mind as I show you how this game is played. So, uh, Gondola, uh, mechanism-wise, is a very, very simple uh, game to teach. Uh, each person will have a hand of tiles. These are bonus tiles. I'll explain that also in just a little bit. But people have a bon uh, hand of tiles. They'll start off with a five. And on their turn, what they're going to do is they're going to place a tile down on the board in some legal location. It doesn't have to be attached to the tile you're on, anything at all. You just place it down, and actually, like, the whole purpose of putting the tile down is that you're kind of, not only are you going to be trying to help yourself along, but you're going to be trying to mess with other players as well. But I'll explain all that just in a few moments. After you place the tile down, uh, you, you will use the information on the tile that you placed and the tile that you're currently on to determine how far you move, and then you will move that number of spaces and choose which way you'll go. So, you know, let's just grab five tiles here, and I'll explain a couple of these things here. Did I grab five? Wow, I grabbed five. Cool. All right, so here is the five tiles I grabbed. Uh, okay, cool. I got a... I got an open water tile. So some tiles will have open water. Now open water tiles are the only tiles that can be placed anywhere. They can um, use these, you can use them to block, you know, add on to like other tile that's there. Um, and they can be placed in situations that would actually like um, block off an area here. Maybe I can, I have a tile here that would work like that. Um, normally you can't like, you know, place a tile like this. You, you can't put like a block off like a little waterway like so. Um, the only tiles that can actually break that rule are, are the open water tiles. Uh, so each one of these tiles will have uh, all these little stats on them and maybe have some other uh, special uh, information on them as well. But just basically they will have a uh, they will have a speed, which is, uh, like, when you place this tile, that's the speed uh, that you get to go. So this would be speed four. And they're going to have a current on there. And that is what determines how fast you can go in comparison to the tile that you're on. Okay, that sounds a little confusing, but basically when you place a tile. So let's say we place this tile. And we placed it somewhere, like we placed it here, you know, to kind of bridge that gap. And you can place it like this if you want. You can place it like this. So just we'll go like that. Now, we would look at this, it says speed 4, so I can go 4 speed. However, we need to check and see the current on the tile we're currently on. That is a 5. So we have a 5 current and a 4 speed. You take whichever is lower. So in this case, it is a 4 speed. And then we could go just 1, 2, 3, 4 if we wanted to. And we move along that path. That's, that's how you figure out the speed of, you know, the, and the, of the distance you can go on every one of your turns. Now, there will be some things uh, that will mess with that just a little bit. So, 
you'll notice on these open water tiles, you see this little red stop. Wherever you, and these are only on these types of tiles. If you were to say place this one, this has a speed five and this has a, uh, a current of five. If you went to that tile, one, two, you have to stop on that tile. You can't go any further, you have to remain there. And you'll notice that like this one has a one on the, on the uh, start. So the next turn, no matter what tile we place, even if we have a tile that has a large speed on it, like we have um, this tile that has a four, uh, you know, if we did say we placed it. See, now this is a situation where we couldn't place that tile here because we'd be block, blocking off that. But if we placed it, say, here, there'd be a speed of four on this, but there's only a speed of one on this tile, so we'd only be able to move one. So, like, you always are kind of, you know, working against, uh, like, placing tiles or ending up on tiles uh, where you're going to be slowed down. But, of course, these big, you know, like, open water tiles, you're going to get stopped because of that stop sign on there. The other thing I should mention is that we actually drew another uh, uh, checkpoint tile. You, they, all the checkpoint tiles have this in the middle. Now, if you draw a checkpoint tile, you have to play it. Uh, you know, you're kind of... Um, if you have it in your hand, you have to put it out there. So in this case, like if the board was like that and say green had the, the, the checkpoint tile, they could go, now let's put it right here, for example. So they would have that. It has a speed of two. They'd have to play it compared to the five so they can only go two. So green would go one, two, like so. You, because that's so basically you can't hold on to them in your hand until you have, you're at a point where like only you were going to benefit from those. Now, whenever you pass through uh, a checkpoint tile, you place one of your cubes on there to show that you've completed that. The important thing is, is that whenever, however many cubes are left, so like you'd have four cubes left, or four, you would have four cubes left at that, that point, their tile size is, uh, like tile hand size, is lowered by one. So you start with five, because there's five cubes that you have access to. When you get rid of one, you're down to four, another one, you're down to three, and so on and so forth. So that's to represent the fatigue of your uh, gondola paddlers that um, as they're going, they're, they're you know running out of strength, or they're slowing down, and that's represented by the, the lack of the number of options uh, that you have when you draw those tiles. Now there's one other thing on these tiles that I should mention, and that is uh, this right here is the number of gondolas that can be on any sort of tile at the time. So for example, like this one has three in that location. So if there were, three gondolas on that spot and green was going to move try to move that through that spot like they had a movement of three and they wanted to go one two three they could go one and they couldn't go to that location so they'd have to either stop there or spend their movement going in a different direction you can't uh go through uh, a tile that is filled with those uh filled to the capacity that the tile has now, after you do your turn, what if as long as you didn't uh, lower your hand size by going through a, uh, a checkpoint, you would draw a tile to replace the one that you played. Now, the only thing I have left to explain here is the bonus tiles. You get a bonus tile when you are the last person to successfully uh, travel through a, a particular checkpoint. So we go through there. There's three on there. And so when blue would finally go through there, they'd get to put their cube down and then after they put that cube down they get to because they're the last person they get to draw a bonus tile now the bonus tiles are cool because these are the, the bonus tiles are the only kind of tiles that have uh these two special things on here they have this this on here which is allows you to whenever you're on this tile nobody can pass so if you have that particular tile let's say it's there and red was on there, and let's see if I can get one that would actually, uh, here, perfect. So like, let's say it was like this, and yellow, you know, managed to move like four, and they wanted to get to this, this checkpoint, they could go like one, and they can't pass by because this person is blocking up the works in that particular one with that, with that tile. And the other tile they have is this. This tile is a replacement tile, and this allows you to take this tile and replace a tile that is currently on the board with this tile. Now, obviously, the normal tile placement rules are still in effect. You can't, you know, block off a waterway or anything, but it does allow you to mix up the board and maybe create a shortcut the other players didn't have access to. It's kind of a catch-up mechanism, and it works really well, actually, because these tiles uh, tend to be better uh, than the average ones that you'll find located in that big giant stack right over there. 
So the game just continues until one person has gotten rid of all of their cubes, and the first one to do that is considered to be the winner of the race and wins the game of Gondola. Now, I like race games, I like tile laying games, and I thought this was a great mixture of those two uh, things because I liked it because it wasn't like a standard race where you're like going around in a circle or a figure eight or something. Um, you created the track as you went, and you had to like not only keep in mind of how you could like put a tile down that would kind of slow down your opponents, but also wouldn't slow you down as well. And had like, wonderful decisions on each one of the turns that uh, me and my game, uh, players in my gaming group had. But I'll talk more about all of that in my final thoughts, and I'll do that right now. Gondola! Gondola! All right, <laughs> there you go. Uh, hey, that will work. That was uh, how you play the game. I hope that uh, was made sense to you. It's really tough to like actually show like the huge game because as you're laying out these tiles, obviously um, you're going to start growing this cool expanse, and that's one of the cool things about the game. Actually, is like after you get done, um, like it's always kind of neat to look at the giant uh, race that you created uh, and the pathing. And I, when I played it with my daughter, that was one of the fun things that we did. And then as I walked away from the board and uh, to uh, fix dinner, uh, I came back and my son. Uh, being four, had taken all the tiles and made this giant snake of a of a of a of a race, which I thought was actually pretty cool too. So yeah, thanks. That was actually kind of neat, and uh, I enjoyed that. But anyway, regardless, um, uh, Gondola is it was as I said is like a really really good amalgamation of uh, two themes that I really like. I I enjoy tile laying games just because I like um, you know kind of looking at the different tiles that I have, seeing the iconography, and figuring out it's because it's basically a puzzle, right? So I like figuring out where this piece is going to puzzle in uh, to the board and where it can be used to like the best possibility. And the, and the neat thing about this game, as I said, it makes tough decisions because, you know, if you're making a really, really easy path uh, for yourself to take, then you're making that for everybody else, too. And so you have to kind of weigh, you know, maybe the possibility of like setting up a, a, a path that like maybe won't be uh, very attractive to other players, but you have the right tiles later that are going to be able to be played in succession that is going to make it good for you. And so you also have to, of course, worry about other people, you know, kind of cluing in on your ideas and what you're trying to do and then putting tiles down that are going to mess with that. And so it does, like, become, like, kind of a thinky game, especially later after, like, you know, you've kind of maybe closed off a lot of the different directions that you're going. And, uh, but it doesn't, it isn't AP prone. It was weird. Uh, none of us, like, really, um, like, troubled over what we we're going to be doing on any given turn because for the most part it's like uh, it's pretty direct you know you're always like okay how do i get you know to the next checkpoint you know theoretically it's been placed or you know how do i what's the what's the fastest route that i can take at this time because once you know unlike you know there is the one the bonus tiles that let you kind of replace things but for the most part once the board is in place it's fairly well in place you know and so um you know nobody was ever agonizing like 10 minutes staring at their tiles oh geez what am i gonna do you know it was a, a relatively quick game and plus the fact that you're actually like lowering your hand size and you're getting less and less tiles in your hand i mean if you only have a choice between two in your hand or, or even one for that matter um the choices are pretty uh, quick and, and uh, are handled very efficiently at that point. So, um, if you like uh, games like tile land games, um, you know, I think you're really going to like this. If you like racing games, you'll like this. And if you like the ability to like actually kind of mess with people and uh, you know try to you know puzzle out you know, like the the best possible uh, direction that you can go on each and every turn, is something I really enjoy because the, that gives me those cool little aha moments where you're able to place a tile in a perfect position and you're like. Bam! I get to move forward. I pass by this checkpoint, and then I ended up on this spot that you know that doesn't allow anybody to pass. And so I've gummed up the works, and I've kind of messed with everybody else on the board. You know, that's those moments of the game that I really, really enjoy because you know everybody's like looking at the table, they're you're having fun, and they're like you know cursing you, or or you're cursing them for like kind of putting the tile down in the perfect position that you want to place the tile. All the kinds of things that make a game interactive fun and engaging for everybody at the table all the time uh, when you're playing it. So, so there you go. That is Gondola. If you have any questions about the game, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those to the best of my ability. Uh, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and until next time, I am the Undead Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day.
All right. Bye-bye.